And we're live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Stripe Dev Chats, where we talk about all the cool things that happen inside of the world of Stripe. I'm your host, Cecil Phillip. And today, we're going to have a really special show because we're going to learn about how we can use some cool features that are inside of Auth0 that I didn't know about until my guy here told me about them. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, maybe you all learned something new today. I'm looking forward to learning something new, and hopefully we'll all have a good time. Now, Will, why don't we kick it off by, why don't you introduce yourself to folks? Just let everyone know who you are, what do you do? Tell us just a little bit about yourself. Sure. First, I want to say thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I love a lot of the other videos I've seen y'all do, so I'm glad to be a part of this. Uh, me, my name is Will Johnson. I'm a developer advocate uh, on the content team, so I mainly focus on uh, writing blog posts and making YouTube videos uh, for Off Zero. I've been here for uh almost a year maybe 10 months since august of last year and i've been learning a whole lot about like identity um you know authorization authentication all those type of things and um, it's been a really exciting time to learn about something that really wasn't taught about when i was learning how to code um so it's kind of you know exciting to like dive deep into something new nice and you know i've been a fan of auth zero for a while and i know recently you all merged or acquired or somehow y'all came together with octo however <laughs> yeah however that situation worked and so now i'm kind of like in this position where i'm like okay well there's octa stuff and then there's auth zero stuff like like what is as a developer how do i kind of look at that like how do i like is it can, should i just look at it as one service and one company or are there like benefits between me signing up with one versus the other like how do we how do we like make that distinction Okay, that's a great question, and um, the best way to answer that is that we are a product unit of Okta. Okay. So um, same company, but we're a, we're a product that Okta offers. So, for example, if you are a developer and you're um, looking for an identity solution, Okta is more geared towards like enterprise. Um, is that that's what you would use them for like enterprise. If you were working with your employees and had a thousand employees that needed to, you know, log in to 45 different systems, that's what you would use Okta for. But okay. Zero is more for like uh, consumer applications or like SaaS companies and stuff like that. So Off Zero is more geared towards that. So if you were a developer looking for which one to use, it'd be best to look at what your business um, is actually doing. Got it. That makes sense. And I know today our focus is not going to be so much so about the actual authentication of, of, of Auth0. We're going to be talking about something really cool called Auth0 Actions, right? Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Auth0 Actions. Okay. So what I want to do first, because I'm really interested about this. What I want to do first, I'm going to switch over to my screen. I want to share with folks just some quick updates about some of the cool things that have been happening inside of the world of Stripe. And then... You know, then I really want to dive into like this this Auth zero um, actions thing. And you know, I know we have a lot of folks in the chat. I see folks jumping in from all over the world. Really appreciate y'all um, checking uh, checking out the the stream. Um, and I hope y'all are ready with tons of cool questions for Will because this is going to be really fun. So let's switch over to my screen real quick. I've been pushing the button and the button doesn't want to go. All right, here we go. So first update that I want to share with everyone. So if you head over to dev two slash stripe. You know, our developer advocacy team has tons of blog posts and articles that they've been writing about some of the cool projects that they've been working on. And one of my teammates, Charlie Gerard, she built this mind blowing demo. Like, I don't even know how to explain it, but she's been looking at ultrasonic payments. And essentially what she did was she created this demo where you could transfer payment information over sound. So no wires, no you know, no Wi-Fi needed, none of that. And it's completely going back and forth over sound. So, which is, again, completely mind blowing to me. Like, you know, she's like an evil genius, good <laughs> evil genius to me, if you kind of look at it like that. Uh, but if you haven't seen this before, again, like head over to dev.2 slash Stripe. Make sure you check out this blog post. I think it's absolutely amazing. And um, the next thing or a couple of things that I want to share with folks is that um, at Stripe, we have this product called Stripe Terminal which pretty much is like, hey, how can I accept payments in person, right? Like, so you have like a little device in your hand and, you know, you can swipe physical cards and things of that nature if you want to collect payments in person. 
So my buddy, um, my my teammate Charles, he's gone ahead and he started to create like this really cool Terminal 101 series. So if you're interested, I want you to go ahead and head over to the Stripe Developers YouTube channel. Not the Stripe YouTube channel, because there's two of them. There's Stripe and then the Stripe Developers, right? Head over to the Stripe Developers YouTube channel and make sure you check out that Terminal 101 series. There's about four videos in there right now, as you can see, and we're going to be adding a couple more of them as we go along. So again, if you want to learn how to do in-person payments, make sure you go ahead and check out Stripe Terminal. All right. Now, enough of that stuff. Um, this is the part where I say, hey, it's no longer like our show, right? This is the Will show, right? We're here to talk, to talk about <laughs> all the cool stuff that the Will and Will Will came to show us, and then also to um, seeing what the community is curious about and what folks are want to talk about and folks are asking. Oh, look at look who's here. Our buddy James Quick is here. Shout out to James really quick. Definitely appreciate you here being here, James. Um, looks like we got a couple of folks from Texas, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we got we got some folks from California. Yeah, we got folks from all over the place, man. So again, definitely appreciate all of you joining us over here today. I'm in Florida. You know, it's super hot over here in Florida. So yeah. <laughs> you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. I can see uh, the use case, though, for the ultrasonic payments, like payments yeah. through sound. I can see, you know, my wife, hey, babe, I need some money to, to uh, do my nails. And I can like, okay, babe, it's in your account. And it, it just works. That's that's the first use case I thought of. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just make sure your girl doesn't hear that because she's going to be like, oh, you can build that for me? Oh, okay. <laughs> now, now you're setting up expectations. Let's not, let's not, let's not make promises. <laughs> let's not make those type of promises at all. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, so talking about actions, right? Yeah. Um, like the first time when you mentioned it to me, and obviously I, you know, before you came on the show, I went and did some googling and went on the docs and stuff. But when I first heard actions, what I thought it was was like another serverless platform, right? Because I kind of feel like everyone has like a serverless thing, like. How can I yeah. run arbitrary code that does stuff in the cloud on machines that don't belong to me, right? And I yeah. don't have to think about infrastructure. I don't think I have to think about scaling. I don't have to think about the management and the backups and all of these types of things. Um, but I kind of get the feeling that actions, Auth0 actions is something different, right? So why don't you tell us a little bit about like, like how do you think about those? Sure. Uh, I mean, it's definitely that, right? The code is on off zero servers. You don't have to manage it or worry about, you know, anything about it. So that part is definitely still there. Um, but the the key to it is that it allows you to like customize your login experience or even beyond the login. Um, you can be able to uh, link up with other companies and, you know, use their services to build them to your off. Like, for example, um we had a, a hackathon um a couple of months ago or maybe last year i think it was yeah. i don't know time is is weird <laughs> right. um but um I, we had a, a hackathon and one of the um one of the winners they presented an application where they linked up with a another company uh integration and they were able to uh use biometric like face data mm -hmm. uh to be able to basically for uh, I think it was Israel to verify someone's vaccine record. So they would like take a selfie, then it would uh, read the um, biometric data from there and then linking up with uh, like what Israel had already um, like in their database and confirm that this was the same person um, that received the vaccine. Um, right. So, you know, it was like you it allows you to like take your I like what you're doing for identity and just really customize it and add new things besides logging in and logging out. Um, or if like say if you're already using a service, like say if you're using Twilio um for your messaging, you can just link Twilio and actions to be able to, you know, send, you know, emails with SendGrid or send MFA uh codes and stuff like that. Okay. So then it's almost like if I wanted to do any type of custom operation within the workflow of logging in, right? Because mm -hmm. now when you think about logging in, we think about different things, right? We think about, do I log in B2B, like business to business? Do I log in business to consumer? Do I log in machine to machine or service to service? Or do I federate one API into another, right? So mm -hmm. I'm guessing for those different use cases, I could, like I think about middleware, I guess. Is it almost like middleware where I can plug into the process and at different points in the process, I might want to execute like 
run this before login or run this after login mm, or run this exactly run this when login fails like are they like events and i just react to events kind of thing yeah exactly yeah it's like a a certain like pipeline that we have in the uh, you know authorization flow that happens yeah. and you can interrupt those points to do uh custom things that you normally can't do all right cool that sounds good so why don't we why don't we go ahead and do a demo? Like why don't we share your screen and we can kind of see what some of the stuff looks like? Because sure, I, sure. I can already think about like examples of things that I'd love to do with Stripe. Like for instance, and as you go ahead and get your screen ready, I can imagine a lot of times I hear folks ask, "Hey, how can I plug in like Stripe customers with like my authentication data?" And I can imagine a situation where, you know, you log into the application and then somewhere in the background, like it creates like a Stripe customer via the Stripe API. And now using metadata, we can kind of tie those things together. Like I'm guessing we could do some of those types of scenarios. Yeah, yeah. And that's definitely something I can uh, show you today. Um, so I have my screen ready if you want to get started. OK, sure. All right, so your screen is up. And let's, right. is that your screen? Oops, no, nope, that's my screen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Your screen is up. All right, so, so, so what All are you right, looking cool. at right now? All right, so right now we're just uh, on the off zero dashboard, just the uh, regular dashboard you log in or you get when you log in off zero. Um, and I also have uh, my Stripe dashboard up too. Um, but one thing that I wanted to show off today that is probably my favorite thing uh, about working at off zero, as far as like the products that we have, is the off zero CLI. I love CLIs like a lot. I never thought I would when I was learning how to code, um, but ever since I started using different people's, it, it's literally my favorite feature of anything. Um, so if I hear you got a CLI, I'm more than likely going to uh, try out your product. Yeah, um, I, but I yeah. the same way too, because I think like CLIs just make it easier for you to create like the work environment that you want. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Versus like, oh, I got to jump to this browser tab and I got to jump to this browser tab and I got to exactly. open this application. If you can have all your tools in like a comfortable spot, then you can kind of figure out, oh, okay, I can run these, like I can write some type of script or something like that and run them in succession. And then now I could like automate some of my things a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna do off zero uh, login. So if you already have an off zero account, um, this is uh, something you can do. So, so could you, could you make that part? Like the the um the terminal is like super small. Could you bump up okay. the size real quick? Yeah, like just control plus command plus that a little bit, and like make that a little bigger. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So you just did uh off zero login. So I'm guessing you uh -huh. had off zero the CLI installed already. And yeah. I'm guessing you can get that. Like if I'm on a Mac, I'm guessing you can get that through Homebrew or. I could download it from GitHub or build it myself if I wanted to or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, uh, and then the docs have like all the um, instruction um, ways. And I can put a link to that in the chat in a sec. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I logged in, then it's asking, it gives you this confirmation code, then it press enter, then it takes you to the browser just to kind of confirm that you want to um, do that. So they you know, ask you to authorize. And you know all the permissions that it has. So I'm authorized now. So if I go back to the terminal, all right. So I'm successfully logged in to this off zero tenant, this dev a g g w x or whatever it says, right? Um, and that's the same one here. So we know we're logged into the right one. Uh, so then. I can so here. This is what is really really cool. Let's say it's your first time ever using Off Zero. You mm -hmm. created an account. Now you can get onboarded um, pretty fast. So you would do Off Zero apps with an S and create the name. So I'm going to call it Stripe. When, and that's also what I want because you're at, so when you're using Off Zero, your applications are here. So click applications, applications. So these are the applications that I have already. So we're going to call this Stripe, uh, test for Stripe. And then it's going to be a single page application because it's going to be React. Uh, then we're going to do HTTP localhost 3000 because that's just the easiest way to do it. And basically, this is the callback URL. So 
when I don't know for people who don't know, when you use Auth0 to log into your application, so you don't build the form or anything like that, it actually redirects your user to Auth0 for the authentication. And uh, when the authentication is successful, it'll bring them back to whatever page they were on. So the callback URL is basically the URL that they come to, come back to after they've um, authenticated with Auth0. Okay, so so let me let me summarize super quick because I feel like a lot of stuff just happened, and particularly yeah. for folks, particularly for folks that may not know Auth0, I think it'd be good to kind of just explain super quick like what happened. So you have the CLI installed, right, and you have a Auth0 account, right? I'm guessing you can get a free account if you wanted to, but there's some yeah. limitations on how much is free and how much is not free based on the tier. <clears throat> but then for every application you're going to build. So if I'm going to build a web app or a mobile app or anything like that, like you have to specify the type of application that you're going to build. So it's yeah. not like I have one author account per application. I have one account and then inside of my account, I can register these different apps. And then each app is going to have like its own login credentials, its own sets of users, its own policies and all of that type of stuff. Let's go to be self-contained in that app, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Correct. That is correct. So you have, and what is it's called an Auth0 tenant. Um, okay. and that's just a, a group of applications, and you can have you know mobile apps in there. You know whatever you want. It'd be all different type type of apps, and they yeah they definitely would be separate. Okay. So then a tenant has multiple apps. Can I have yeah. multiple tenants in an account? Or would, would that yeah, you can have multiple there? tenants. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's cool. That's good to know. All right. So now I have these multiple tenants. And now you just set it up so that it's going to be a single page application. So that means mm -hmm. it's going to be browser rendered. And, you know, like you said, like some JavaScript enus is going to happen in the internet, <laughs> right? And yeah. but now you have these URLs that, you know, some of them are local hosts, some of them are going to be callbacks that we're going to have registered inside of the application you just created for this demo. And mm -hmm. now we're going to, we're going to do like some Auth0 Kung Fu to kind of get that all working together. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, got it. Let's do it. All right, so that should bring up a new application called Stripe. Okay. Um, and this is like what's really, really cool, right? So you see you have this domain and client ID. This is how, um, you know, your your, uh, your application is identified through Auth0 uh, for them to be able to keep track of it. And each of your applications would have a different one. So this is really cool. So right now, there's no actual application, right? There's no user interface. There's no nothing to log in. Right. There's nothing on the application. So you can do off zero quick starts and download um, for the off zero CLI. And then it would, it'll ask you which one of, which one of your applications you want to use. So I'm going to do Stripe. And then it asks you, you know, what are you using? Angular, React. JavaScript, Vue, right, Next.js, a couple of other ones. So for this, I'm going to pick React and hit Enter. That's new one. We'll see if you uh -huh. current or React read only file system. Are you in a folder that doesn't allow you to download stuff? Could that be what the case? What like what folder are you in right now? I think I'm in like the yeah, you can't put it in there. No, you can't put it in there. You got to do 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 the desktop or put it in like your user. I don't know if you have a user dev folder or something like that. Yeah, there you go. So now you're in your your home folder. Yeah, yeah. and then do you have like a dev folder inside of there? You can do cd slash, you know, will builds awesome stuff, and then and it just creates stuff in there. Uh, I usually just do stuff from this one, so that's like odd. I don't know. Uh, that's fine. Just yeah, just I'll just say just create a dummy folder. Just call it like I don't know, test <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just go there and see what we can do. Let's try this again. React. No, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I think like go back. So you're in the users folder. Go into your folder. Like go into the Will um, Will Johnson folder, <clears throat> and then just make a directory in there and just call it, you know, 
whatever you want to call it, right? Like just call it demo or test or something. Like so, just MKDIR a thing, and then you should be fine. Yeah. And then while you're doing that too, um, so landing feedback. What is up? Is this? I've never seen this in my life, and I literally did this like earlier today. Oh no! Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you want to? Do you yeah. want to close? Do you want to open up a new terminal session, maybe? Yeah, let's pop it open again. And then um yeah, make sure you're in your home directory. So let's like let's let's check out and see what's happening with the folks on chat. So landing feedback says open it, open your terminal, and then you might have to control plus that again super quick. And then go ahead and mkdir at dollar sign home tests. So at your home di directory. Yeah, that should be big enough now. All right, let's let's go into your home directory slash test. And then, yeah, dollar sign home, dollar sign capital H O M E slash test. I think you had a dash P. Okay, and now go in CD into home slash test. Yeah, now go back. Yeah, capital E slash test. Uh huh. T E S T. Boom. And now try and do it, do it again inside of here. Let's see what happens. Like uh, run that off zero download command. Hopefully it should work. Is it working? Please work. I'm gonna cross my fingers. <laughs> I'm gonna cross my fingers. I'm gonna like tear some paper. Is it? Did it work? Yeah. Is that what? Yeah. Okay. Here? We're good. Okay. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> for your feedback. This is this is called um, live streaming. You know, pair programming. So definitely appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. So I'm gonna open this up in the VS Code. And then while you're doing that too, going back to, to our folks over here on YouTube. So landing feedback did have a quick question. And he's asking, does off zero save the token locally? And I'm guessing he's talking about the, the CLI, right? So the question is, does off zero save a token locally? I'm gonna be if he's talking about like to get authenticated to access get access to the CLI. To be honest with you, I don't know, but I definitely can ask the CLI team um, how that works. I, I I do not know. Okay. Yeah, good question. So we'll we'll get back to you on that one. Or what you could do, you could follow Will on uh, you know on social media. <laughs> you know what I mean, and then he lets you know um, whatever the answer is. All right, so what's uh, I'm doing the npm install right now, and uh, but I really wanted to show is that we have this Stripe application that we created. We have the domain and this client ID. So we have this sample application we just downloaded. If you go to auth uh, config .json, and well, that's supposed to be filled out for me. I wonder what's happened. Maybe because we have to change folder. So what are you expecting coming mm -hmm. up? What's going on? I'm expecting this domain and client ID to already be uh, populated in. for us. That's fine, yeah. but you can just go ahead and pop it in. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then go ahead and make that, make Visual Studio Code, VS Code a little bit bigger too. Like double, you know, like maximize the screen. There you go. Yeah, and then open up the editor a little bit. Give, it, give yourself some space. I'll just boom for now, because we really don't need this for that long. Okay. All right, so this is the app that was generated whenever you did Auth0 quick start samples or quick start download was the command that you ran, right? Yeah. Cool. And so it pulled some stuff down, and now all you're doing is that you're just going to fill out this domain client ID credentials, right? And then we should be good to go. Yeah. OK. I noticed the last piece there says audience. Like, what is audience? It says your API identifier. Like, what is what's the difference between the audience and the client ID? Uh, so I don't have a lot of experience with the audience, but usually when I've seen it, it's used for um, when you're trying to work with APIs. 
Got and it. Tyler okay. Clark is in the chat. He's been at R zero a little more than me. Not to put you on the spot, Tyler, but if you had more insight onto uh audience, it would be helpful. But yeah, I think it's more of when you're trying to get access to APIs. Okay. Got it. All right, so I hit NPM run start and uh, it's loading the should be gorgeous application that was created by Off Zero. So, yeah, this is a, a sample application. Like all the Off Zero stuff is already set up as far as like logging in, logging out, all that is already taken care of in this application. So, if you never use Off Zero before, just wanted to get up and running, this would be like a good way to like try it out and have everything um, already set up. Nice. So then if I use, you know, like you said, there's React, there's Vue, there's Angular. I'm hoping there's some .NET and some Blazor stuff in there too. If they're not, then I know somebody you could talk to about that. <laughs> um, but if you're doing any of that front end stuff really quick, like I could just download this sample and I can peruse through the code and see what's happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got it. Oh, it looks like Tyler made a, made a response to that uh, question we had about audience. And he says, the audience presented as the AUD claiming the access token defines the intended recipients of the token. He also says, this is typically the resource server API in the dashboard that a client would have access to. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, so for, so basically what we're going to do now is that we're going to get into all zero actions. I just wanted to show you how cool the CLI is. Like we really got, if it wasn't for our issues, we got a lot of work done in like three commands. We logged in, sure. we uh, created a brand new account in our off zero tenant and we added an application to it. And I think if we didn't have the, the issues with the directory thing, um, those values would have been populated on their own and we wouldn't have to copy them. Got it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, the next part of this is actually creating a, off zero action. So here in the off zero dashboard, go to actions and then go to library. And this shows you like any um, actions you may have installed. And these are from the um, off zero marketplace. So there's some pre built uh, ones in the off zero marketplace that you uh, have access to. And you can browse these here. Um, these are pre-built and you can just basically no code add these and should be able to run. Um, but we're going to do custom for one that I create myself. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're going to do build custom. I'm going to name it Stripe. Um, and this is going to be a pre-registration trigger. So these are the different trigger points we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a machine to machine pre-user registration. This is before the user gets added to the database. Um, and this is good for if you want to like add metadata before it gets saved to the, the database so that mm -hmm. you, that metadata is in the database. This is post user registration. This can like be if you want to like send a welcome email or uh, something like that, post password change, um, and then send phone message that you can use for like uh, MFA or something like that. So for this, we're going to use pre user registration because we want to. Uh, add the metadata from Stripe um, in this whatever new user gets created. Um, keep the runtime the same. Then we hit create. And then this will bring up the code editor for uh, off zero actions. So as you see here, uh, it has a function on execute pre user registration. And then it has an event object and an API object. And we'll use these to get access to um the user information okay um and kind of some other things to kind of talk about um here you can test the action before you actually deploy it and run it in your system here you can add secrets um so you know if you instead of you know committing them to source control of course we all know that's a, a bad decision you can add secrets here and they'll be you know not shared and not seen uh, by anyone and you can add literally any package uh, from NPM that you want to use. So that's another cool thing that you can do right here in the browser with all zero actions. So it's almost like this is, this is like a sandboxed NPM environment, right? So yeah. even though it's running on these particular events that happen within my like 
authentication or more my, my my like my my auth pipeline i could like as i'm thinking about it, like there has to be limit i can't pull in any package like there must be some <laughs> limitations to the packages i can run right like because i know there's packages that like delete the file you know the file system and stuff like that right so but i'm guessing any any anything that doesn't have to do with like you know mucking with the file system like i can pull in services i can pull in maybe extra code that I've written to like do extra things and it'll run within the context of this event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, so what are we going to do now? Like what's the plan for our, like, you know, pre user registration thing that we're doing? Yeah. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is add a dependency. So, mm -hmm. and this is like super easy. You click add dependency. We're going to put the name Stripe to add the Stripe NPM package. I usually keep, I don't mess with version. Um, I usually just keep pull the latest. Mm -hmm. um, so, boom, we have the latest uh, dependency there. Uh, and for the longest, uh, and then I'm going to add a secret key. So, can I stop sharing just so I can? Uh, yeah, that's totally fine. Sure, okay. sure, sure, sure. That's fine. Right, you know, we need to. Um, oh no, I'll take your screen off. You don't have to worry about okay. it. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Cool. All right, your screen is off. But I was just okay. thinking, like, we need to do one of those, um, one of those screens that come up and say, "Oh, secret things are happening," and then we just kind of play like some funky music or something. Um, yeah, that would be pretty cool. But um, but while we'll go ahead and he's configuring his system, if if y'all have any questions for him, anything that you want to know about Osiro or what he's doing with actions, feel free to go ahead and put it in the chat. And I will do my best to make sure we get those answered on uh, on screen. Right, and then yeah, well, whenever you're ready, let us know, and then we'll uh, we'll get back to it. All right, give me a sec so I can just delete it in case I have to go back to that screen. And all right, you can uh, bring your screen right, back. Bring my screen back, yeah. And just like that. Ta da magic screen. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. All right. So, yeah. So, I have the Stripe Seeker key as the name of the key. And then I paste it in my um, secret key that's actually from Stripe. So, I click create. Uh, so, now I have the Stripe Seeker key and the Stripe NPM package. So, now I'm going to copy and paste some code in because uh, I'm a slow typer. And, <laughs> uh, this stream would be a lot longer than an hour if I was to type everything in. And plus, it's always hard to type when someone's looking at you. You know, I don't know what it is, but I find like the minute that you hit live on streaming, like your computer goes slower, your keyboard buttons move around, <laughs> things just aren't as responsive as they're supposed to be. Like, I don't know what it is, but I think like your computer knows when you're talking to other people and it just doesn't know how to act right sometimes. Yeah, it does something. All right. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to require Stripe, and we're also going to pass in the uh, Stripe secret key. So mm -hmm. this is the event object that I talked about earlier. Um, so the event object has like uh, different information that you can pull from it. So here you can also like one thing you can pull is secrets. So event dot secret dot Stripe secret key. So now we have the secret key uh, from the event object, and I went ahead and. Uh, set this to a variable called stripe um so the first thing i want to do is we're going to create a new user mm -hmm. or a, a new stripe customer mm -hmm. and this is cool because like you can write any you know node.js um code in here javascript code this is yeah. uh some code that i got actually from reading the stripe docs so this is all stripe uh from the stripe doc so we create a customer uh, so stripe dot customers create and mm -hmm. then we pass in um i forgot what this was called in the docs but uh, basically we pass in like some uh, details about the customer we get their email yeah. so event dot user dot email um a description is automatically created by an off zero action um and then we pass in some metadata is that you want the off, off zero user id and the all zero user ID, the value of that is going to be event dot user dot user ID. So it's going to be the user ID when this user creates their account that they get from off zero. That's going to be the value here, and it's going to be the um, the property is going to be off zero user ID when they're actually a Stripe customer. Nice. 
Well, I cannot tell you the amount of people that have asked me this question so many times, like, how do I connect Stripe customers to like off, um, off context, whether it's, you know, whether it's Auth0 or Active Directory or another thing. So it's kind of good to see how what's happening here. It seems like it's, it's pretty seamless. It's not that much code. And now, like, after you've run your integration, I should be able to see inside of my Stripe account that there's some metadata, right? Which is pretty much just a dictionary of stuff, right? As key values that yeah, happen, yeah. like my Auth0 ID. So I could say, hey, for this logged in user, look for this ID or whatever set of keys or whatever you want to use to identify them by um, inside of Stripe. And now it makes it easier for us to tie those two pieces together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's actually what I heard you, because, you know, we talked about this, I don't know, a couple months ago. Yeah. And you were saying that was like a big thing that people asked. So I, I went and did did some research to see if we can make that happen on the stream. Yeah, this is amazing. Man. I love it. I love it. All right, so you've created a user, right? Mm -hmm. User's created. So what do we what do we do next? Uh, so next, I'm going to uh, save the customer ID from Stripe into the off zero uh, metadata. So once it's created, wow. and then uh, so I use the API object. Mm -hmm. So it's API that user. Then I set app metadata, and I pass in what I want it to be, which is going to is going to I'll call it or the property, I guess, is the Stripe customer ID, and the value is going to be the customer ID, which is this same customer here. So the customer dot ID from Stripe is going to be the Stripe customer ID in off zero. So now we're creating that relationship between the two. Okay. So then what we've done now, or what you've done here is that you created it in both places, right? So in, in the Stripe account, like the Stripe account, the customer object would know what the off zero ID is. And then now mm -hmm. over in off zero, the the user object the person that has logged into the system their metadata would also have like information about stripe so either way like i have the flexibility to go right or left and know who's who and what belongs to it exactly nice cool cool all right so and is that it that, like, is there more stuff that needs to happen inside of the action or is, is that it no i'm going to i mean i'm going to check and make sure no um uh, so i'm going to deploy it Okay. So now to deploy, it doesn't mean that it's like live on the site or anything. Um, it needs to be, and it gets this little thing, add to flow. Um, so it needs to be added to a flow. But real quick before we get there, go to the user management and user. I'm going to click on this user here. And then it'll show you. So the user metadata is stuff that users can edit. So that's why we went with app metadata. So this yeah. is, you need a secret key to access this and um, can only be writ uh, written with different permit certain permissions. So right. this is where this will show up. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. Okay. Nice. Um, so next, go back to actions, and we're going to go to flows. And these are the options of the flows. Those trigger points we saw when we created the action. Uh, so we're going to do pre-user registration. And this is cool because this is like just drag and drop. Oh, no. Oh. So we take uh, the Stripe one that I just created, drop it here. It's very important. The next step, click apply. I, I've been using Actions pretty heavily since November, I believe, and I still forget to hit apply. So <laughs> right. make, I don't know because <laughs> the button's up here and maybe I expect it to be down here. But anyway, uh, I digress. The point is make sure you click apply. So now... Um, this should be actually live on our R0 site. So, okay. So, before you go on, question. Yeah. So, I, I haven't used R0 a lot. So, I apologize if this is like a crazy question. But, okay. So, do flows just exist in your account, or do, is there a concept of a sandbox or a test mode flow? And then I'm like, hey, I can test this out in test mode, quote unquote, and then I mm -hmm. move it to production. Or once I create, once I create like the action and the flow, do they just exist? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, you can go here where we created the action, library, mm -hmm. uh, custom, say we go back to this Stripe one, um, and then you can test it right here. So you hit test, um, and then you can just run it, um, and then, you know, it'll tell you if it, uh, worked or not, do, 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 and then 
It'll tell you if you had any errors. It'll give you the information that you wanted. So this is how you test it before you uh, have it live on your application. Yeah. Does that so make sense? That, yeah, that makes sense. But like, so how do I promote it to production, I guess? Like I've written some code. Like what if the code I've written and saved in here is not done, right? And then... uh, you can save a draft here. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and also you can also revert. Let's say you uh, had a version that you don't like. You could always go back to a different one too. But say you had one, he was like, oh, well, let me uh, add an access token to the Stripe user too. And then you're like, nah, I don't want to do that. I just want to add the user, uh, the right. metadata, and you can revert. Uh, so there, are, I can't remember exactly how many are saved, but you can save quite a few of those to uh, revert back to. Okay, I got it. All right. Okay, so then you're showing us the flows in the, the menu side? Right, yeah, like you so, showed us the flow, you drag and drop the stripe thing in the middle of the mm -hmm. login flow. Yeah. So remember, this is pre-registration. This is before it's actually saved to the database. So basically, someone's going to, and this is for anyone, this is my first time doing the stream explaining technical stuff. So yeah, trust me, I'm nervous. Um, but I'm doing but Cecil's a great host and making me feel really comfortable. So <laughs> um funny. <laughs> so if I'm like forgetting things or talking fast, that's the reason why. No, um, we're all good. So basically, when a user registers, uh, let's say here, user sign up, right? Before the user, the registration is complete and it's saved as using the database, this action is going to pop up and do the code that we ran in it, which is um, get those, get the Stripe ID, save it off zero. And then get the uh, zero ID and Stripe and from Stripe at Stripe and save it there. Um, so all this is going to happen before the user is actually saved in the database. So basically, this this action interrupted the normal flow of a user signing up and getting saved to the database. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a really quick question um, coming in again from YouTube from Landing Feedback. Um, question is: So it creates a user on registration, but you still need to get the credit card information, right? Um, so, so I think that's more of a Stripe question. So I'll answer that really quickly. So when you're using the Stripe API, there's a couple of ways that you can get the credit card information. One, you can get the credit card information on checkout, right? So at the moment when, hey, I have the items in my card, I have calculated my total, and I'm ready to press the button to be like, I want these things. At that point, we can redirect you to our Stripe hosted checkout page, product called Stripe Checkout. And then at that point, you could have the user input the credit card, or you can use Google Pay, Apple Pay, Klarna, all of these different things, you know, bank accounts and things of that nature. You can collect the payment information that way. Another option that you have, if you want to collect the payment or if you want to collect the credit card, credit card specifically upfront before the user does anything, then you, you know, you can do a little bit of work and you can create what's called a setup intent. And a setup intent is pretty much just saying, hey, as a user, I am giving this application or I'm giving this website or whatever the case is, my credit card information, and I'm authorizing the usage of it for later, right? So this is good for things like, I don't I have a subscription, right? You know, every time you have a subscription, I don't want to have to call Will every time and be like, hey, Will, you want to, can I, can I bill you this month? Can I bill you this month? Can I bill you this month? You know, when you have subscriptions, they just automatically bill you, right? It just kind of just happens. Right, so setup intents are really good for, for doing those types of things. So depending on if you want to do one-time payments, recurring payments, or if you have like a SaaS business, I know a lot of SaaS folks take the payment upfront, as in like they take the payment method upfront, and then as you use services, then you know they'll send you a bill, hey, this is what your total is. We're gonna charge you on like the 15th or the 30th of the month or whatever the case is. So again, you have those options to, to do those types of things if you want. Um, Looks like Landing has one more question, follow-up question. What's the advantage of creating a user at this point from all zero instead of when a user does a checkout? So why would I not want to create a user on checkout? You could create the user on checkout. That's completely fine. Um, I think once you, one of the things that you can do, one of the things I like doing is that like once the user and the customer are created, for me, in my head, like it's done, right? Like I don't have to think about creating the user later. Also, you know, I can see people run into bugs where they go to the checkout page and now they're creating a user every time because I'm on the checkout page. Oh, I have to create a new user. I don't want to do that, right? Instead, I prefer to just say, hey, I have a customer. 
I already have their credit card information. And then now when we forward them over to our checkout page, or if you're hosting your own page and you're sending them to our payment elements or however it is that you're using Stripe to collect the payments, we could say, hey, charge this user, charge this customer this amount versus charge this amount and then you know create like a, a customer to attach that to. You know, so for me, it just it just feels better for me. Um, if you want to do it the other way, that's totally fine. You just have to do a little bit more code checking on the end to see, hey, if customer exists, you know, don't create a new customer, otherwise create the customer. So yeah. this for me is just like a little bit more automated because now one, this code is in auth zero, it kind of just works and now we don't really have to think about it as much. Yeah. And that's the same thing that I, I've seen in my research uh, for doing this particular action is that it's like it's done. I don't have to think about it. You know, and when it, when it's time for them to check out, I already got everything I need. It's just from um, the customer uh, standpoint, seem to make it a lot easier just to to do everything all at once at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'm saying, like you can do it one way or the other. Um, for me, it just feels easier. Um, and a lot less, you know, a lot less buggy, right? Or a lot less <laughs> error prone if we do it up front and then the customer is already connected. And, you know, yeah. if, if, you know, worst case scenario, we could just, you know, we could just, you know, create a new customer or sign in a new user or something like that. Cool. All right. So, so are we going to test it out? Is that what we're going to do now? You're going to sign in and we're going to see yeah. if it works? Uh, I'm going to log in. I'm going to go to sign up and we're going to see how this goes. It worked earlier, but you know, the internet I mean, you gotta, people are watching. You got to be good to the demo gods, man. I tell you all the time. <laughs> you got to be nice to those people, man. All right? Is that right, you? Yeah. That's not you. That's yeah, you that's too. me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't even know, like, where that picture, like, where's that picture <laughs> stored at? Like, seriously, because it's that's it's funny. like on none of my social media. Like, I don't know where that picture is from. <laughs> I don't know, man. Somebody watching you, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Somebody's watching. <laughs> okay. So, but now you have a, obviously you have a, an account. Your account mm -hmm. is user signed up in Auth0 and it's yeah. signed into the Stripe application in Auth0. So now I'm mm -hmm. guessing that means that your flow would have ran and that I should, or we should be able to see you one with the metadata, with the Stripe metadata inside of your Auth0 mm -hmm. account, but then also the Auth0 ID inside of your Stripe account. Yeah. And let's see if that is true. So, boom, we have the Stripe customer ID here okay. from the app metadata that was added for that mm -hmm. new user we just created with the nice uh, Wayfair sunglasses on. <laughs> nice. Uh, and this is my Stripe account. Me. I'm going to refresh because I don't want other people in there in the one day. Okay. Uh, can you not share my screen right quick? Just All right, hold on one. one second, and your screen is off. All right, so your okay. screen's no longer there. We're not showing your Stripe account. Um, I hope that account is in test mode. I hope you're not showing us like, like an account that you're making money on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hold on. Uh, what happened to him? Well, no, one, of the, not that. one of the things I'm wondering too, and maybe you can answer this as you're looking through that, is for every run, is there any logging that happens or any events? Like if like what happens when the action fails, right? Like where can I go to get, um, I don't know, debug errors or error messages? Or would that be something where I have to pull in my own package and now I'd have to like, you know, push that out to something else? Um, I can uh, show you that. Uh, give me just a few moments. Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, this is. Do, 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 do. This is where we need that funky music playing. Do 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 do. What show is that from? I'm trying to remember what show that is. Mm, 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 mm. Is that Jeopardy? Do, 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 do. Uh, I believe so. All right, you can uh, share my screen again. All right, cool. All right, so your screen's back up. Yeah. And dun, dun, dun. All right, so here's the user I created, walexander.johnson at Gmail. And then also has that message that we had, the uh, automatically generated 
uh, by Off Zero mm-hmm. Action. Um, and then here's a user ID from Off Zero. All right, this is the user ID from Stripe, the customer ID. Yeah. Um, but it looks like whatever I did and didn't get the, the metadata to save. Of course, that would happen. Um, but at least we, I guess that's a good thing about having it in both places. So we know that it it ran and it's mm-hmm. saved inside of the um, inside of the author metadata. So now we just have to take a look at this API call real quick and make sure that it was saved in um, in the other side. Yeah, I don't know. Name I mean, is the event that user that ID. I guess I'm wondering: is event that user that ID available at this point, like when this runs, or you know what I mean? Like, is that is that is that populated? Because you have this running before um, before the users like before it's complete. You know what I mean? So I'm just wondering. Mm. If, I'm wondering if that matters. Like, if you dragged it to the bottom. Versus having it in the middle, right? Because if you if you if you go back to that flow and you showed how you had it, you you had the stripe thing in the middle. So I'm wondering if you put it at the bottom versus the middle, if it would make a difference. Mm. Uh yeah, that would. Or uh, well, the thing is, is it it can only, it can only go between those two points uh, oh, okay. on the editor. But okay, I'm trying. It this like what I'm saying is like this definitely worked earlier and i like literally just deleted the user like i deleted uh my user out of stripe that i made like yeah probably 10 minutes before uh i got on the call that's funny uh i mean the so code yeah. looks right to me right so i guess yeah. I, the only thing i'm wondering is if event that user that user id actually has stuff in it at that point i'm guessing it should i'm hoping it should yeah but, i mean because yeah. the user is created like the pre-user registration, uh, it creates the user already, just doesn't save it yet. So the user is Got like it. already there, it's just not in the database. Got it. Um, yeah, I can do some uh, messing around with it and see. And see what happens. But that's um, fine. But I think yeah. it's still fine because, like I said before, you we saw how to do it in both places. So even though yeah. even though we you know we still need to do a little bit of debugging to figure out what happens when you ran the action. We still know that you were able to create the customer, and that customer ID was created inside of um, the stripe. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The customer is there, and that's the the stripe ID, the same one that we had here in off zero. So mm-hmm. that connection worked. We just didn't write it back to um, write it back to off write it back to um, see if the test one worked. No, okay. I'm gonna look yeah. into that. Yeah. The one thing, so we're running a little bit low on time, but the one thing yeah. I didn't want to see back into actions was the logging. All right. So this is what I wanted to see. Like, how did yeah, how does, how does this logging work? Like is it just automatic or can we log our own stuff? Or is this just your own logs like within the action? Uh this is the logs that like cross off zero in general. So you can go to oh, okay. the uh the menu over here, go to monitoring and then logs, and it'll kind of tell you uh you know what things happen what time it happened you know like normal logging got it. got it and then since so this is the logs for the tenants and i'm guessing you could filter by application i'm guessing and then just see the logs for that particular app filter by a lot <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah so i guess you can filter by a lot of different stuff got it Cool, cool. But yeah, that's uh like the logs you can view. See, sure. um, let's see, let's see, let's see success exchange. And it could very well possible, and maybe I even have the uh, no user ID is the correct thing. But I'm gonna. I know we almost over. Let me go here one real quick because I can see what the uh, event object has uh access to sure and then so i'm going to test event dot user yes yeah so there's no Um, user id yeah okay interesting 
Okay, so then that's probably why. Is there another thing at the top? Name no, that's my tenant ID connection. Connection ID. Yeah, the connection ID is a protocol. Yeah, so that's why I'm wondering if the user ID doesn't exist until after it's saved the database because it has all that other information except like the ID over there. Yeah. That's interesting. Like this literally worked earlier. So I don't know what's up. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You might be in the middle of a production push. They might have just pushed some features and now it's not, <laughs> now it's not there anymore, right? Like that that happens, you know what I mean? Like things happen. Yeah. Uh, but this was cool though. So let's so let's recap real quick, right? So yeah. so we started off kind of just talking a little bit about like Auth Zero and Octa. And you know, you're letting us know that like Auth Zero is is like that B to C, right? Like that business to consumer authentication glue right so if i wanted to log yeah, yeah. In, if i had a website or a mobile app and i wanted people to log in with social accounts and stuff like that like i'd go to auth zero and sign up and then now i'd have like an account that has tenants and applications and like all this goodness and then now after we create our application we could use i'm guessing that we could do it in this using the cli we could do it inside of the browser if we wanted to but if we create our application inside of our app or we can associate with the flows of our app, like these different actions. And these actions could do things in the middle of, or before the user save, post-registration, you know, all these different events that happen. And then now we could start to react to stuff, which is pretty cool. And then you could, you know, you write a little bit of JavaScript, you, you know, you paste it here inside of the, um, inside of the in-browser editor. And mm -hmm. then, like you said, you could download NPM packages and all kinds of stuff to try this out. But essentially, this will just run and kind of just give us the ability to like automate some flows when it comes to authenticating and particularly when it comes to us plugging in with other services. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's a perfect recap. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So with that being said, so is there anything else you want folks to know about? Like, you know, how could they, you know, how could they reach out to you? Like, what are you up to? What are you doing? Blogs, Twitter, LinkedIn, like, like tell us all the stuff that folks yeah, yeah. know about, like how they reach out to folks. Uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, the best place to follow me is on Twitter at Will Johnson IO. I talk about uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't talk about it, it tech as much as like most people on Twitter seem to talk about their lives now. So yeah. mostly, mostly I, I talk about like my kids and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah uh, Twitter is a good place to follow me, ask mm -hmm. questions. I'm a big proponent of the community. You can always ask me anything about DevRel, about breaking into tech, yeah. um, networking, anything. I'm always uh, down to help people, and I'm I'm always willing to uh chat with somebody so don't hesitate to dm me for uh anything that might be helpful for you awesome and i'll be very i'll be very selfish right now like this was definitely very helpful for me and i promise you i'm going to try this out in some of my, some of my demos because again it's a big ask that i hear from a lot of folks how do i plug in you know an authenticated user or an authenticated user in a database somewhere with stripe and so this is a great example of how to actually achieve that so again i'm going to do it in my demos and i'm going to be pushing folks to use uh you know actions and stuff like that in uh in some of their integrations cool appreciate it sam i think it'll be it's super easy i think it'll help a lot of people so that's why yeah, i, I think like so it. too i think so too well with that being said thank all of you for watching appreciate y'all sticking around with us for the past hour if you're just joining us i saw a couple of folks that just jumped into the chat please rewind and go back to the beginning um you know or maybe even halfway through and then kind of just check out some of the cool stuff that Will showed us with um, Officer Actions. And like you said, feel free to message him on Twitter or LinkedIn and all the places if you want to learn some more. But with that being said, um, thank you all so much for joining us. And we'll see you again the next time we do another Stripe Jump Bye, everybody. See you.